Now that we know how to declare and instantiate case classes, we need to figure out how we're going to use them in our programs. And it turns out the answer to that is, well, it's not very hard. So we have our declarations for point and student, and we instantiated two objects over here. They were given the default names of res0 and res1. It turns out that getting values out of a case class is as simple as following the name by the dot and the field that we want to pull out. So our point has fields named X, Y, and Z, fields or members, as they'd be called for object-oriented terms. And the student has members called name, tests, assigns, and quizzes. And just using the dot notation, as we've gotten so used to doing with objects, gives us the values out of an instance of a case class. Using this knowledge, we can write some simple functions that take the class. Uh, for example, we could define a distance function that takes two points. It's going to return a double for the distance between them. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce a number of variables for this. The difference between them in x is p1.x minus p2.x. I'm missing an x. And we need similar expressions for y and z. And then the value we want to return is the square root of dx times dx plus dy times dy plus dz times dz. That gives us a nice function that we can work with. If we load this file back in, we can see that it's happy. And we can even call distance on a point at 1, 2, 3, and a point at 4, 5, 6. Point 3D, sorry. And there we go, we have an answer. What about using our student? Well, let's define a function that would return the average grade for this student. So we pass in a student, and their average will be a double. If this were one of my classes, the tests would probably count for 40% of the grade, the assignments would be 50%, and the quizzes would be 10%. So we'll go with that formula. So 0.4 times the average test, which will be test dot sum divided by test.length. I didn't put parentheses around there because the multiplying by 0.4 will convert this to a double and that way I get double division. If I were to put parentheses around this because the grades are integers and their length is an integer, this would wind up using integer math and it would truncate. So I'm actually happy leaving that off so that we get the double math. And last, we have our quizzes. Once again, we can load that in, make sure that I haven't messed things up. Apparently, I have. Oh, I have a typo. What about quizzes dot length? Oh, and uh, huh, yes, all of these are typo because I have left off the s dot. We don't have a test. We have an s dot test. We don't have an assignments. We have an s dot assignments, and we don't have quizzes. We have s dot quizzes because we are pulling these values out of their case classes. Okay, so I can get the class average. 
I'm not 100% certain this will work. Nope, I didn't think so. Uh, let's redefine our student. And then call class average on that student to get an average. One thing to note about case classes, as far as their usage goes, is that the values in them are declared as vals. So if we have our student, I can't change the name of this student. I get a reassignment to val. So by default, case classes are immutable, as long as the things inside of them are immutable. If I had put arrays instead of lists in here, well, then I would actually be able to mutate the values inside of those arrays, but I wouldn't be able to change what arrays they were. So I wouldn't be able to change the length of that. That has an impact on how we program things with case classes, the fact that we can't mutate their values by default. We'll see how we deal with that in some later videos.